everyone, my name is Michelle Filiolo, and thank you so much for tuning in to Cook with Jay Wu. I graduated from Johnson & Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island in 2016, and I got my culinary degree and my food service management degree, and today I'm a culinary food stylist and a culinary producer. So I got my start when I was working, I actually worked at two different TV shows, uh, Chopped on Food Network, and I also worked on the Chew on ABC as a food stylist. And if you don't know what a food stylist is, basically we make the food look beautiful and also taste beautiful. So whenever you see any TV show, there's always a culinary team behind the scenes that's you know preparing everything, testing the recipes. And today I work as a culinary producer and food stylist for Middleby Residential. Um, so to get started, we're gonna start by making an herb and brown butter um, shrimp roll. And it's super delicious. This is a great dish to have in the summer because you can make the shrimp salad before and keep it in the fridge. And then when the guests come or your friends come, you could just easily put it right into your hot dog bun or your brioche bun. So it's great. And during the live, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I have my camera lady here and she's gonna definitely ask me the questions throughout the live so I can try to answer as many as I can. So to get started, we're gonna start off by putting our oven on broil. So I'm just gonna start off. This is gonna be set to broil for our bun. So I have our brioche buns over here and I just have about six buns. You can use regular hot dog buns if you want. You know, whatever you have around, you can even use a burger bun, it doesn't matter. As long as you have some sort of roll, this is great. And we're actually gonna take some of the butter and brush them on top right before we put them in the oven. But once we do that, we're gonna start first with our brown butter. So for the shrimp rolls, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to take like a riff on a lobster roll, which I love a lobster roll, but it's kind of expensive and sometimes it's not as accessible to get lobster and breaking a whole lobster down. Trust me, I've done that a lot. It's <laughs> not that fun. So shrimp is super easy. I just got a bag of two, pound, two pounds of a bag of shrimp and they're frozen. So super simple. We're gonna take the brown butter here. So I have about a quarter cup of butter and I'm gonna just gonna turn the heat on. And I have it on high right now. And we're just gonna let it slowly melt. And I'm gonna kinda like whisk the pan around a little bit like this. And you'll see, it's gonna melt down like to a regular butter, but when you brown butter, it's like one step above a regular melting of butter. You wanna brown the milk solids and it gives you this like nutty flavor that's definitely a little bit more elevated and you get another note of that. So you can see here, it's starting to melt already. And just mix it around. I, you can even use a spoon, whatever you have, to help move the process along. And I have this on high right now. But you also want to be careful that you don't, you know, let it go too far because then if it burns, <laughs> the flavor is not nutty and delicious. It tastes like burnt. So you really want to be careful. Someone asked, what was the hardest food to make at J Wu? Okay, let me try to think. Well, it was funny because I worked in like a few restaurants before I went to Johnson & Wales, but I really didn't have like too much experience. I, I really learned everything at Johnson & Wales, which I have to say to this day, really taught me pretty much everything I know and then also working in the industry. But I have to say the first time I, maybe even something as simple as roasting a chicken, like that was one of my first labs. I had a, like New World Cuisine, I think it was. and. I don't know, just roasting a chicken. Now I do it so much because I love it, but that was definitely hard to perfect. Okay, so you could see in here, see it's like definitely bubbling. This is now just regular melted butter, but like I said, we're gonna take it a step further. And you could see, you gotta, gotta be careful, but brown butter is awesome too. Actually at work all the time, we make these brown butter chocolate chip cookies, which I'm telling you, they're amazing. You brown the butter before instead of having room temperature butter, and then you make the cookies like that. It's actually a recipe we do all the time. We make the cookies ahead, we scoop them out with an ice cream scoop, and then we put them in the freezer. So whenever we have you know, guests coming into our showroom where I work now, we pop them out, we throw them in the oven. And I also do that at home too, if I have any like friends coming over and I wanna have some cookies. Okay, so you can see here, Sparkles. Get to the point. But. Sparkles asked, how do you feel about the mayo-based shrimp rolls? How do I feel about them? <laughs> well, I like using mayo for this because this is definitely a little bit faster, but you can also just use butter if you wanted to. I know at work, um, I actually have done like little mini shrimp rolls or lobster rolls before, but just butter, and they're so good too. So you don't need to use mayo. 
but this is just something that's easy if you want to put it in the refrigerator before so you can make this ahead of time and put it in the fridge because if you used just butter on it it would kind of congeal and not be as you know as delicious so you could see here see how it's slightly brown it's a little foamy so it's hard to see here but once you kind of whisk it you can see that it started to get a little bit brown and this is exactly what you want all right so i'm going to take this off because i don't want it to go too far like i said so we're going to take it over here and i'm going to actually dump most of this right into this bowl to let it slightly cool so i can make the mayo mixture so i'm going to dump this in here and just save the slightest amount in here i'm going to put this back here because i'm going to rub some of the extra brown butter onto the brioche buns before i broil them quickly okay so now that we have the brown butter in here like i said i'm going to let it cool a little bit and we're going to do the shrimp so i actually have half the shrimp done already just because i don't want to be cutting the shrimp the whole entire time but we're going to put the rest of the shrimp in and i'll show you how you know we're going to cook that over here so i have the water it's been salted and it's boiling right now pretty much we're just gonna pop these right in and this is like i said just frozen shrimp okay this is frozen shrimp with the tail off and it's been peeled and deveined so we're just gonna kind of mix this together and shrimp cooks so quick which is nice too so you can cook this ahead of time and then make this dressing with the mayo and the brown butter and just let it stay in the fridge until you're ready you know for your guests to come over and scoop them into the actual buns um someone said have you ever cooked competitively in jaywoo before okay i haven't cooked competitively at johnson and wales but i have cooked competitively with my good friend jackie rothong um we did a cooking competition before and she's done a bunch of them but we did a really fun one at this place in hoboken new jersey um, where it was the two of us against a few other chefs. It was like teams of two. And we actually won the first one we did. And then the other ones, we came in like second and stuff. So we've done a few of them. And it was a lot of fun. And I love being fast paced. That's why I was at the Chew all the time. It was very, very fast paced. Like when the chefs wanted something on the show, we had to run and go get things. So I definitely love that excitement and that energy. So maybe in the future, I'll try to sign up for some other TV shows like that and do the, the competition. Um, but to get started now, the shrimp is cooking, so we're just gonna let that go like another two minutes. But for the actual dressing itself, I'm gonna add in the other ingredients. So we have our brown butter here, which is a quarter cup. And you can see, it's, you can actually tell now that the milk solids have browned in there, um, which is, like I said, a super delicious flavor. It's something maybe, I don't know if you've ever had brown butter before, so simple to make, but it just gives you that other layer of flavor. And we're gonna take a half a cup of mayo. So this is just like your rank, you know, whatever you got from the grocery store, your favorite brand, totally good, or you can make homemade mayo if you really want to be crazy. And then, I'm just going to kind of mix it together. I don't need to mix it perfectly yet because I'm going to add some other ingredients in. And you can see that it's kind of starting to come together. It almost looks separated a little at first, but then once you give it a good mix, it will all come together. Okay. Someone asked, what was your favorite memory at Johnson Wales? My favorite memory, I don't know, I have to think about it. Um, so I loved at Johnson & Wales um, being down city on the down city campus. It was so cool to be in like a mini city because I grew up in New Jersey and I was always going into New York City and I love New York City, but to be able to go to school and then have like so many restaurants and have Fed Hill there. I used to work at a restaurant called Sienna on Fed Hill for a while. So just like the whole area where Johnson and Wales is, that brings back so many good memories. And then all the labs too, just learning so many things from the chefs and I don't know, I, I feel like those are like some of my top memories there. That's what I, that's what I would say. Um, okay, so to this mayo, like I said, we're gonna actually add a bit of texture to it too. So it's not just like a mayo dressing. We're gonna add some um, celery. So this is about a quarter cup of celery. So what I like to do is I have the celery ready, some of it. And I'm just gonna go right down, so you can see it like this, right down the middle, like that, and then we're gonna cut these into sticks. So right down the middle, so have it again, and then another half. So now we have over here our celery, and like we learned at Johnson & Wales, you always wanna hold your knife like this. You never wanna <laughs> chop like that. You wanna hold the knife and grip it here so you have more control of the knife when you're cutting. So I'm gonna just do some little, this is gonna be nice and thin. You don't wanna do too big of chunks, and you always want to curl your fingers when you're chopping or else you might you know yourself so 
I'm just gonna cut these up. And it's important too, you wanna always, when you're making something, you always wanna make sure that you have, you know, the texture, the acidity, um, you know, the different layers of flavor to really cover all of that and round out the whole dish. Okay, so I'm gonna add this to dressing and then we're gonna pull the shrimp out. So let's do this. Okay, great, let's pull the shrimp out. And like I said, this comes together so quickly. And I'm just gonna pull this off the heat. And then I'm going to just quickly strain these. And this was a two pound bag, like I said. And to quickly get them like cooled off a little bit faster, you can put a little cool water on them if you want. I mean, you salted the water, you're gonna still salt the actual mayo dressing itself. So don't worry too much. I mean, shrimp white by themselves don't have too much flavor. So it's important that when we make the mayo, we're gonna actually, the dressing for it has, you know, a lot of flavor incorporated and you're definitely gonna season it as well. Okay, so come back over here. We're gonna add in our herbs now. So we have our dressing going. We have our brown butter, our mayonnaise. We have our celery for some texture. And now we're gonna go on to the different herbs. So I'm just gonna take some of this parsley here and I'm gonna kind of bunch it up. I have the stems on them. You don't have to really do, go too crazy because I'm kind of just gonna do a rough chop on them and then go over them again. Um, someone asked, why do you want, why did you want to be a part of the culinary arts industry? Uh, okay, so that's a good question. So I originally thought I wanted to do nutrition when I was younger, I don't know why, but um, I grew up always cooking with my grandmother and I, love to cook. I really didn't have that much experience though before, I guess right before culinary school when I knew I was gonna go there and I was like, all right, let me go to a restaurant for a little bit and see how it is. And really I started to get into it because of my grandmother. She's a great home cook and you know, makes all the typical Italian dishes that I love. And she was really the one that I would say that kind of opened my eyes to loving food because it, not to sound cliche, but like it really does bring family together. I'm always around the team with my family. I'm always, you know, cooking for my family and that makes me happy. So going to culinary school was something that, you know, really made that come full circle. And then working in the food industry, um, like I said before, I thought I wanted to work in restaurants <laughs> the whole time. And I ended up, you know, working in restaurants in college and realizing, I don't really know if this is exactly what I want to do. So I was able to get into the food world, but the TV side of it. So that was something I was like, wow, it's so great that you can do so many different things with food. It's not like just like you're, you know, pigeonholed into working into a restaurant. So it was definitely great that, you know, I was inspired to cook by my grandma, but then I was able to take it somewhere else that, you know, was definitely another, another great career. So this is just some scallions that I'm chopping here. Just a rough chop. You want to kind of do these nice and thin still. And you can do the whole thing. You can go down to the whites because it's all gonna be mixed in together. So you don't have to go too crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna add these in to our dressing. Okay, great. Okay, and then lastly, we have some chives here. That we're gonna add for some flavor as well and these you know you just want to get a nice thin cut on the chives as well and I'm telling you this comes together so quickly and it really is a delicious quick dish and it's great because you can make this all ahead of time and you can definitely keep this in your fridge okay okay I'm gonna add this in here okay now I'm just gonna Mix it all together. So you can see here, it's, you know, definitely a nice, flavorful, herby brown butter mayo. And we have that here. And then I'm just gonna clean off my board really quick. Someone asked, <laughs> what kind of knife are you using? Okay, quite honestly, this is not even a special knife. The knife is just like very simple because I had to move out of my apartment in New York City, so I don't really have any of my stuff here. This is just called 
a saboteur. Honestly, it's pretty good. It's pretty sharp. I just bought them because I didn't have my knife. So just on Amazon, nothing special right now. Okay. Do this really quickly. And like in Johnson and Wales, you always have to clean up as you go. You want to make sure that you know your space is nice and clean as you're cooking. I'm just gonna get rid of this. Okay. And now we're gonna add a little acidity to this dressing. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of um, white vinegar. So this is just gonna go right in here. I'm gonna add that in. Just to kind of, like I said, add a little acidity to this. And then we're gonna add a little bit of lemon zest and lemon juice. So I have my zester here. You don't have to go too crazy. I mean, if you wanted to zest the whole thing, you totally can. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon. Someone asked, as a food stylist, what was the best job you had to do? Okay, so as a food stylist, I mean, I've had so many great experiences working in the TV world as a food stylist. Um, I would say one of my top ones was when Anthony Bourdain came on the show and then he came back into the kitchen and was talking to us and letting us know like how the dishes that we made for him tasted because what happened on the chew a lot was that the chefs would come on and they would just come on the show that we would, the food stylist in the kitchen would be handed the recipe and we would have to make it for them and then they would usually taste it right before the show and they weren't there cooking. So on these TV shows when these chefs come on, they're, they're not back there cooking, you know, they're just coming onto the show for the day. So it's really cool when, you know, any of these celebrity chefs were to come into the kitchen and taste what we made and they were happy with it because you know it's nerve-wracking because these are you know really well-known chefs um and like i said i'm just gonna put in some lemon juice like one half of it um but yeah definitely i would say for anthony bourdain when he was there and then just in general like all the episodes of the two were so much fun um and I'm trying to think of like another memorable one Doing photo shoots, I, I've done so many different photo shoots in the cookbook for the two, and then on Chopped, um, working behind the scenes on Chopped was really cool. Um, you know, working with all those celebrity chefs that are the judges was great. And I mean, also, do, I recently I just did a photo shoot for Bon Appetit, which was great. Um, but it's definitely a lot of fun, and, and it's an exciting industry. So um, everything's good with our dressing. I'm just gonna put these to the side as well and I'm gonna get our shrimp. So we have our dressing ready to go. We're just gonna take our shrimp that we just cooked and we're gonna basically cut them in half and then in half again. So right now the shrimp obviously it's a little warm still and that's totally fine when we make the dressing. But um, when you're done, like I said a few times already, you can put this in the fridge. So I'm just gonna cut this in half and then in half again or in thirds, whatever you know you're comfortable with. I don't like when these are too large pieces for the shrimp because when you're building it, you know, they fall off easily. So you can even do thirds, like I'm doing this now, like in half and then I'll cut it in half again. And you just kind of wanna make sure that you have uniform pieces so they're good for the buns. So, I thought of this recipe actually because I love a lobster roll in the summer and it's so much fun. And when I was invited to do the Jay Wu Live, the Cook with Jay Wu, I was thinking, oh, this would be fun. Something that's, you know, a popular dish in the summer, but also I feel like it was crazy with everything, you know, obviously quarantining and, you know, not being able to get some of the dishes or some of the ingredients that you needed at the grocery store. And the bag of shrimp, I mean, Honestly, I feel like this is usually always at the grocery store in the frozen food section. Um, and everyone pretty much has mayo. Everybody pretty much has vinegar. You can use just regular vinegar. You don't have to use a lemon. You can, you know, substitute different vinegars if you want or whatever you have around lime. This is definitely a dish where you can use substitutions as well and use what you have around. Um, and definitely more cost effective because I know that to get any lobster, it's definitely a little bit more expensive. But... Someone asked, how has being in quarantine affected you? Well, it's been a little, I mean, it's been a little crazy. I think for everyone it's, you know, affected everyone a little bit differently, but having a strong support system with family and luckily I'm able to be here with my family 
um, during these crazy times. Um, definitely helps and not to sound cliche again, but cooking. Like I've been cooking almost every single night for my family um, since I'm just back home. I usually um, am in the city, but with everything going on, I you know decided to come back home and cooking for them every night has been a lot of fun. So for me, you know, it's it could be worse and the fact that I'm here able to cook with my family is great. So everything's been okay. All right, so we have this here, our last piece of shrimp. And you can even, if you're really, you know, not feeling like cooking the shrimp, you can even get pre-cooked shrimp and it's even that much easier to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my hands off. Okay. Okay, so now we have our dressing and we have our cut up shrimp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna add this to the shrimp and we're gonna mix it all together. So, and you can use different herbs if you want to. You don't have to use the herbs that I used in this. But you can use, I mean, if you're feeling like cilantro or tarragon or, you know, dill, totally whatever you want. So I'm just gonna mix this together and then we're gonna season it pretty well. We're gonna use some kosher salt. And this really, like I said, it has seasoning in the um, the water when we salted it, but it's gonna go a little bit heavier. And we're gonna use some freshly ground black pepper. And I know sometimes people always think you have to add pepper when you add salt, but you really don't have to. It's really preference. So if you don't like pepper in this, don't add it. If you don't like an herb, substitute another one. Totally okay. Uh, someone asked, what does it take to be a part of the industry? Um, do they mean the industry, just food-related industry, or do they mean food stylists? I'm not sure, but if you want to be part of the food industry, I mean, it, it's definitely hard work. I mean, especially everything going on now, like you can see that it's so hard for these restaurants, it's so hard for people in the food industry, but if you work hard enough and... Um, you know, you have a great product and your food is really good. I think, you know, it will speak for itself. And I know restaurants where I grew up too, people are so supportive of them and they've been doing so well because their food is amazing and they, they treat their customers very well. So, uh, I mean, you have to just be tough though. I've been, I've been, you know, yelled at before in the kitchen and you have to have a tough skin. So unfortunately, you know, if you're easily affected by that, you kind of have to get a little bit tough in the kitchen, but if you are, you're gonna go far. Uh, okay, so now that we have this, we saved a little bit of the brown butter from before, and we have our brioche rolls. So I'll move this to the side so you can see this. So we have our brioche rolls here. I'm gonna quickly get rid of some of these dishes. Okay, and I have a little bit of brown butter left that I'm just gonna quickly brush on top. Just a little bit. I mean, these are kind of buttery already because they're brioche, but you know, who really cares? <laughs> okay. Okay, just a little bit, like I said, nothing too crazy. And I'm literally gonna throw these into the oven for probably 15 seconds because my broiler is very strong <laughs> and I don't wanna burn them. So take this over here and I'm just gonna stand here and watch. Check on those, I'll turn the oven light on. And yeah, like I said, just a few seconds, um, just to get the tops a little crispy, nothing too crazy. And so it just gives, you know, a little bit of warmth to the, to the uh, shrimp roll. And over here, and over here, I have a nice platter where I'm gonna serve the buns with some chips on it. Let's take a look. Just give it a little twist. Yeah, this isn't fun when you, many times on the chew, many times in places, if you step away from the broiler for a second because you have something to do and then it burns, it's not a fun thing. Trust me, that's happened to me many times before. All right, just another few seconds. He's over here. I'm also going to serve it with some chips and some pickles. And this is great. Actually, we're going to eat this for dinner now at my house too. <laughs> so this isn't just for here. This isn't just for the live. We're going to eat this. Another second, just wanna watch. Let's see. Okay, great. So I'm gonna take these out. Okay. 
So right over here, I have the buns, which I'm just gonna place onto, they're not that hot, I don't need this. Um, we're gonna place this onto the platter, which you could serve it like this, you could serve it just, you know, by itself on a plate. We're just gonna get a spoon. Um, someone asked, any advice for Jaewoo students? Um, so advice that I would have for them for culinary students, I would say just, you know, be involved in the school, um, talk to your professors, like do any extra activities if they offer it. It's definitely good to connect with professors. I mean, I know I have some that were so great to me and I went, you know, on the weekends and did certain events that they had or, you know, connected with them. And later on in the industry, I still were able to connect with them when I graduated and they were so helpful and just so great. So definitely take that extra step if you're at Johnson & Wales and have the opportunity to work on like the weekends or do different things with the school because the Johnson & Wales community is great and you know, it's large. So it's definitely something that down the road, maybe it won't help you think, oh, why am I doing this? Or it's not, you know, worth it now. But trust me, I always feel like there's always, it's always worth it to just do something. Even if, you know, you don't see it, the results now, maybe later it will help, so. So like I said, we're just gonna fill these up. Just gonna get a paper towel. So we're gonna fill these up. I'm not going too heavy on them yet because I'm gonna save a little bit on the side, but it's just super simple. Honestly, pretty impressive when you take a look at them. If you brought a nice platter of this outside and you can serve them with chips, you can serve them with some pickles, you can serve them with you know a nice salad. You can even do this shrimp um, salad on top of like a bed of lettuce if you're trying to watch your carbs, which sometimes I do that too. Okay, just take this last one here. And like I said, I didn't fill these up too much, but I'll definitely let my family go in and fill them up more because I know that they will. Okay. All right, so we have our shrimp rolls here finished and we're going to top them off with a little bit of chives, some extra chives that I have on the side just to add some color. Do we have any more questions before we uh, Someone asked, what is your favorite show to binge watch? <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite show, hmm. Well, my sister recently has been watching Obsessed with Gr Guy's Grocery Game, right? That's the name of it. Yeah. I mean, she's obsessed with that and I've randomly been watching that with her. Um, I mean, maybe I would say that. It's a housewife show, I do like Bravos, so <laughs> I'd probably say that. Um, okay, so we have our beautiful shrimp rolls that were super simple to make. They came together in, you know, 30 minutes or less. And then we have our side of our chips and our pickles. And I guess I should take a little bite so I could tell you guys what, you know, you really think, let's say. Okay, so you definitely get the acidity from the lemon and the lemon zest, so good. The chives are nice on top, just add a little bit more of the chai flavor. And I think this would actually, not gonna like lie, I think even if you had some few chips on top, it would actually be really good too, because you get the crunch from the celery, but I'm kind of the person that sometimes puts chips on the sandwich, which is, might be weird, but. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. And if you want to tune in, I think they said on July 6th is the next live. So the week of July 6th, you can see another Cook with Jay Wu. So thank you guys so much and have a great night.